Did you see that? I did see that. Oh, All right. Oh, All right. Beat up my enemies. Tell me what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. My name is Turner Gucci, and welcome to my senior defense. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's nice. So, before we begin with my academic journey, allow me to tell you a little bit about me. I'm the second of two sons. Despite being the younger brother, I ended up being the caregiver. I mean, I took care of my sibling and cooked for me and my family when needed. This grew into a passion for helping other people and inspired my desire to become part of Allied Health Science. Additionally, I always had a passion to draw. Ever since I was a toddler, drawing helped me communicate my emotions when I otherwise didn't quite know how to. Dozier Libby has challenged me in many ways, with group projects, many presentations, and more. There was a new obstacle at every turn, and although it was difficult to endure, I wouldn't change it for anything, because it shaped me into the person you see before you today. Because I went here, I am now confident speaking uh, publicly and can work effectively with others uh, who have been in different beliefs, cultures, and work ethics than I do. Because I went here, I am prepared for the next step in my future as an allied health specialist. So during my freshman year of Dozier Libby, I began my first ever integrated project called Good Eats, which involved our health, English, and biology classes. For this project, students were split into groups, and then we chose a health and nutrition topic to research. Being sure to include that topic's effect on the body during uh, rigorous exercise and day-to-day -day activity. Additionally, students were required to create a public service announcement, or PSA, involving the group's new found knowledge of the topic. My chosen group of four, including myself, decided to present the topic of carbohydrates and energy. We learned carbohydrates are organic molecules, uh, classified as either simple or complex according to their structure. Simple carbohydrates are found naturally in foods, such as uh, fruit, milk, and milk products, while complex carbohydrates are found in uh, peas, beans, whole grains, and vegetables. Higher amounts of carbohydrates are needed with increased muscle mass and increased physical level activity. However, excessive carbohydrate consumption, especially with simple carbs, will be stored for future use as fat or glycogen. We were supposed to divide the work evenly, however, we didn't. <laughs> Only one member of the group printed out the graphs and pictures necessary to display on the trifold, uh, while two of the other three did their share of indiv individual assignments, which is includes this uh, drawing a topic poster and an essay in uh, health and biology class in which we talk about uh, the topic and the cause of disease. Uh, as for me, I edited the entire video myself and it was my first ever experience with that. Because of my inexperience, it came out to be oddly cropped, very blurry, and the audio is primarily wind and dog barks. <laughs> All in all, we did not effectively communicate with each other. Uh, instead, we just assumed we would have a finished trifold to display uh, for presentation. Uh, and ultimately, only one member of the group who typed and printed everything actually understood our topic was able to discuss with adults during open house. I failed to participate with my group effectively as well as responsibly. I could not advocate for my group's chosen topic uh, and instead just stood awkwardly next to the trifold without even understanding the basics. Rather than respond to the poor video quality, I decided I wouldn't be able to fix it in time for open house and gave up. The group's overall project uh, was an 8 out of 10, which for freshmen is not bad but I know I could have done better. So for sophomore year, there was also plenty of room for improvement in the complementary and alternative medicine project, otherwise known as CAMP. This project required us to split into groups that select a disease uh, and a location research in depth and do a 20 minute, pre uh, 20 minute presentation. My group got the country Iran and the disease diphtheria. Within the group, there were roles including allopathic physician, uh, cultural specialist, patient, and nutritional healer. That was me. In this role, I learned that Iranians take part in rituals and revenues that include cupping. My group had a hard time locating information on the subject. Not every member of the group could meet outside of school hours, making it very difficult to address the project's concerns. As my group's traditional healer, I was tasked to understand the knowledge and practices used in diagnosis, prevention, and elim elimination of health-related issues based on practical experiences and observations passed down through generations within that country. I applied six key factors to traditional healing in order to treat the patient, including climate, uh, food and drink, sleep and waking, movement and resting, discomfort and relief, as well as the psychological state. Mrs. Sada, my patient, was born in Iran but moved to the United States as an infant. She claimed to have problems of breathing, nasal discharge, sore throat, fevers, and chills. To test for diphtheria, the physician swapped the back of Ms. Sada's throat in order to find a bacteria called uh, Cornibacterium diphtheria. 
After the test proved positive, the physician asked what choice the patient would accept for treatment. Uh, it's going to be both an allopathic and traditional practice, uh, or more traditional, which is the alternative practice. Mrs. Sada wished to proceed with the traditional practice because of her culture's common treatment style. For Sada, I use a variety of medicinal herbs, dietary practices, uh, mind body therapy, spiritual healing, and applied therapy. Individually, I earned a 9.5 out of 10 uh, solely because I failed to address the education practices for I ran during the 20 minutes of the presentation. And for junior year, the Ninth Medical Museum project, or NAM, is where my initial uh, improvement was finally seen, specifically in Sofia. This project was designed as a multimedia museum exhibit of historical and medical health uh, events, including advancement center for a specific historical era. My group was assigned to influenza during the 1920s, in America, also known as the Harlem Renaissance. We were required to integrate the curriculum and skills learned from the four fortune classes, including health, physiology, English, and U.S. history, by exploring the medical advancements, as well as the science and technology, political, social, and economic trends of the Pacific country. In health science, each member of the group synthesized the information they in the in physiology, English, and history to recreate a medical record for the time period selected. Throughout this process, students were taught how to use the soap note format and medical terminology in order to professionally construct the medical record. It is very important that students learn the basics of vital signs and humans and be able to identify that they're unhealthy or uh, sick patients. For example, I diagnosed my patient, Alfred F. Jones, with influenza after reading that uh, the patient's body temperature was 102.1 degrees, which is above the normal 90 degrees. His pulse rate was 69, which is well above the normal 60 degrees per minute. His respiration rate was 30, which is definitely higher than that of 20. And his blood pressure was 137 over 87, which is far above the normal 120 over 80. It was not until I took Jones' second physical exam that I understood that he contracted influenza instead of high fever, from which I initially misdiagnosed. The reason I reassessed my patient with another physical exam was due to Jones' unexpected hemorrhage within hours of being within my care. Despite general signs of final era, a waking up fever, lethargy, headache, and coughing, the plan of treatment incorporates both the historically accurate and present day use of medical resources. There was no effective vaccines or antivirals in the forms, but it was uncommon for um, patients to be actually treated for it. Is that they were prescribed very large doses of 8 to 31 grams of aspirin per day. Unfortunately, Alfred Jones died for two days of treatments, but they the past victims of influenza. However, in today's modern medical advancement, the annual vaccine can help prevent and limit its symptoms before the counter anti-inflammatory pain use. This project required extreme health literacy in order to accurately express my diagnosis of the patient. Additionally, I also had to be able to think critically to identify the similarities between symptoms of typhoid and influenza and determine accurately what this thing was. This shows much better problem-solving skills than I could be because instead of giving up after misdiagnosis, I pushed on and got the right one, which I earned an 8.6 out of 10. I actually researched effectively myself and became knowledgeable in my topic. No more saying awkward and sad. The purpose of the night of the now of the writing was to write a collection of first-person journal entries which describe the symptoms and treatment of the group selected disease of either the healthcare professional or the patient created a health My patient, Alfred F. Jones, was diagnosed with influenza for America's Father Renaissance in the American Forest. He suffered moderate to severe symptoms of fever, lethargy, headache, and more before being admitted to the hospital. Unfortunately, there are no cure for influenza at the time, leading to extreme feelings of hopelessness. Jones would eventually pass two days after his arrival due to prescribed overdoses of one of the few treatments for the disease, which was just aspirin. Three journal entries, each one no less than 200 words, were submitted as both a hard copy to an English teacher and online to carry out the For presentation day, one of the group members decided it was best to choose clear handwritten journal entries to display as it was required to showcase. I actually wrote uh, the perspective of after drug symptoms, the treatment during the era of which he lived in. American Mountain Cure for the influence in the 1920s, so the medical staff only treated him and he was treated for pain cure. Understanding the situation, Jones decided to accept this risk for the pain of an estimated 500 million souls who experienced a 1918 1919 pandemic. 
And so I wrote that talked about this with those contracted with work that allowed me to research the disease and become knowledgeable with the medical terms and research uh, for conditions earning me a 9 out of 10. This impact of my future as a medical student and practitioner because I will be able to become familiar with the medical terms, circumstances of the disease, and details that I would need to use to assess the patient. I am able to understand the point of view of the patient because I wrote the journal and successfully developed a character in which I could educate myself with the trials and tribulations that a patient would endure day to day. So, during senior year, uh, as a new lawyer for the public defender's office, my task was to solve the homicide mystery of the legal team I chose in my physics class for the Clue Project. In this project, the police held six main suspects. Each of the suspects had a potential motive and evidence to be used against, um, against them to uh, prove guilty or innocent. In this, I wrote an individual a persuasive writing where I argued that Mrs. Zeal was innocent. We began eliminating the suspects based upon the evidence collected from tire tracks, fingerprints, blood, and maggots found the crime scene, as well as concerning uh, circumstantial evidence such as alibis and motives. We identified which blood type matched the blood found scene after comparing the repeated numbers to the CODIS loci, which is over there, and it's 12, 11, the uh, same numbers repeated down and downward. Um, belonged to Mr. Young, who had blood uh, O positive, which is structured the same as A and B positive. So we compared the two and claimed that it was Mr. Young who did it. He was found in the room. In order to determine which gun was used in the crime, the team calculated the mass and velocity of each bullet by multiplying the two to conclude that the gun was either the Kimber, uh, Solo Carry, or the Tars, based on mass. After this, my team all agreed Yuri Young was the most suspicious to the heavy evidence point towards him, such as the matching tire tracks to the ones on scene, same blood type for the sample and the forensic and DNA evidence in the medical ethics classroom, including the identical fingerprints to the prints found in the room in which the crime occurred. Mr. Young's alibi proved that he would have been time to dispose of the evidence and the body. In government class, my team learned the Miranda rights in order to reestablish the criminal's rights of avoiding self-incrimination in a fair trial with an attorney. My group planned which day would be best in order to film the required grand jury indictment video, which is where we acted out how we believe the crime went down. I had a share in creating the final video to be published on YouTube by utilizing specific uh, video editing apps such as iMovie and VideoShop. For this project, I earned an 8.5 out of 10 on the packet and a 10 out of 10 on the PowerPoint. This project required me to face a problem without a clear solution and work to solve it. Additionally, I had to utilize technology such as the video editing apps in order to edit our grand jury indictment video. Having done this project, I'll be able to use my skills in identifying and solving abstract problems and apply them to my future patients when they prescribe their ailments and seek a diagnosis. Also during the senior year, uh, the International Economic Summit, or IES, uh, students chose a team in a country with the objective of improving the standard of living for the inhabitants of that country. My team of five, including me, chose a nation on the eastern coast of Central America known as Belize. As economic advisors, we research Belize's weaknesses and strengths in order to know what needs to be improved. This way, we develop uh, import and export goals for increasing our country's standard of living. Belize needed help from other countries because it was a Division III country, meaning it was less developed. I researched my geography's uh, country's geography, topography, businesses, schools, healthcare, and culture. I had to understand common economic terms and the concepts. I wrote informative and explanatory texts when discussing my country. I covered all aspects of Persia, Prince H, model concerning political, economic, religious, social, intellectual, areas slash geographic influences, and including the country's health equity issue. I taught myself various new apps such as PictoChart and how to in order to create PictoCharts and motion graphics that outline our country's issue of domestic violence. I took part in advocating for Belize's health equity issue by presenting the animated motion graphic with sensitivity due to the topic of abuse. Ultimately, I participated with various countries during Summit Day in order to check off every requirement my country needed for resources. Summit Day was the final day in which we all, um, all the countries decided to be in one room and where we could uh, trade specific goods, imports, and exports so we can benefit our country. Uh, there were many aspects to this project, which included the infographic, motion graphic, essay, summit score, and kitty art. For the infographic, I earned an 8 out of 10 due to repeated data. 
Next on the motion graphic, my team scored an 8 out of 10 due to lacking solutions to spread more awareness. For the essay, I received an 8 out of 10 for effectively introducing the topic and transitions uh, of each required topic. On the day of the summit, my country received 7 out of 10 due to tweaking their original training plans, resulting in the loss of valuable time. Lastly, for my individual KDR, I was graded 9 out of 10 after meeting most of all the final requirements. Overall, I received an 8 out of 10 as my group's IES score. This project may become more uh, knowledgeable about trading uh, and how economics works on a global scale, as well as how this uh, could trickle down to affect healthcare. Because of this project, I am much more aware of various cultures and religions, and I am able to use that to my advantage when I work with a myriad of different patients with all different backgrounds in my future uh, career as allied health specialist. The basis of the first responder class is to detect and correct all life threats, including resuscitating an unconscious or seemingly unresponsive patient. Throughout the course of the year, students have been taught and trained various techniques in order to save lives of all ages, especially with CPR, uh, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. For this technique, I complete a cognitive and skills evaluation in accordance with the curriculum of the American Heart Association Life Support CPR and AED program. In order to successfully resuscitate a life via CPR, the responder must first tap and raise their voice of the unconscious patient, um, asking if you are okay. Next, check for breathing. Uh, if position both hands, like so, on the sternum. If you see no oxygen intake in the lungs, and then you begin 30 compressions, um, and after 30 compressions, you give two breaths. And so, continue compression without causing further harm until help arrives. I accomplished learning the AED, uh, which is the automatic strength fibrillator device, and how to perform the correct CPR execution on the hands of a dummy, earning my certification for the first responder teacher. It is exceeds this carrier DG, which is my first ever award by day one. <laughs> After that, I volunteered to help uh, my fellow students practice CPR, as I know it's a few struggling in class. This experience will greatly impact my immediate future by giving me the skills I need to possibly save a life by being able to apply CPR or use an AED device when the person is in need or in that moment. This is a great skill to chalk off as I continue my medical education. All in all, Dojo Libby has thoroughly prepared me for the next chapter. Starting this upcoming fall semester, I will be attending St. Mary's College studying allied health science uh, in order to become a health professional. The skills I have acquired here through all these projects will carry me through to my end goal. Drawing helped me communicate my emotions where I otherwise didn't know quite how to. However, I can now say confidently that I no longer have to rely on my art just to express my thoughts. Instead, I'm here today as proof that I can project my voice to what I believe in. Because I went here, I stand proud, tall, prepared to every, I'm prepared for every unknown obstacle that comes at me. <laughs> I've done that a lot. <laughs> so bring it on. And lastly, I have a thank you slide dedicated to my friends and family who have been with me on my side throughout these four years. If it wasn't for my friends, I don't think I would have found a when it felt like I fit in. I felt like an outsider. Um, they pushed me into just becoming myself, which is a lot of hard work for me to realize and who I am. We're all going through it. We all can relate. Um, and my family, although despite different opinions, they have been by my side. They give me a bed and they give me the best food ever. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, and I thank my grandma. She just passed away recently, but um, I was hoping she would see me graduate, but I know very well that she will be um, up there because I believe in that, and she wanted me to believe in myself. So, thank you guys. That's it. Do you have any questions for Terry? Yeah, sure. I got a few. All right. Uh, with your night in the medical museum, you talked yes. about uh, soap known, uh, being a so Spanish what? teacher, not a health teacher. What What's soap known? What exactly is that? So soap note is a medical record um, you usually use to uh, apply to diagnose a patient. 
Um, it's just a medical record. Usually it'll be found in like on the patient's bed, just in front of them, like, uh, in front of their feet. Okay. And then uh, another term that's just new to me, I, I saw sometimes you said clue to, and then sometimes clue. What what does clue stand for? I, what I'm not sure. What clue or clue to? What, what is that an acronym um, so for something? The second, yeah, if I just said clue, um, the second power is up there. Um, it was just a project in which we solved like as detectives. Gotcha. Um, but is it does that clue stand for anything or no? No. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, let's talk about you got that one. Okay, compare yourself, Terry, to think about between freshman, sophomore year, so junior, senior year, um, about how you grew in your ability to co collaborate with others productively. Absolutely. So I was awkward and shy. I came to high school. Um, I had literally only three friends uh, mm -hmm. from middle school, so I didn't know anyone. There wasn't for one friend uh, who allowed me to introduce themselves to other people um, who I consider my friends today. I didn't really talk much. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know uh, where I sit in. I was like in the community. Um, but now I feel like because of like such dramatic growth for high school and projecting my voice during presentations or just working in class as a group, um, I'm definitely much more talkative. And especially about my feelings for the first time. That's the answer to your question. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Sure. Uh, you talked about your resilience that you had like overcoming a lot of things and challenges. And my question to you is which area um, do you think that you were stretched the, the most and then grew the most? With your, uh, if you're looking at you know the four years, what point do you think you were like stretched the most? And it could be any of the vitals or another area of the vitals, but which area do you feel like you were stretched the most? And then through that process, made you grow the most? I would say leader, um, because I would always just follow anyone uh, without doing it. I'll just listen to other people. Of course, I still listen to people, but I think that's what also being a leader is. Um, I listen more, and I actually uh, speak up. I, um, I give my opinion um, when I think is needed in order to fix something, and I will tell you, like, hey, we should do it this way. I feel like this is better. Um, I'm also uh, able to identify after problems. Like, I know um, if something's wrong, I will absolutely tell someone, and I'll say, like, hey, there's something about that. And they're like, oh, I didn't catch that. Thank you. So, absolutely, leader. Thank you. Terry, there's a whole batch of new kids about to come to Dojo Living Medical High School for the mm -hmm. first time. As a graduating senior, what advice would you give to any of those kids as they come here their first day? Don't put such high expectations on yourself. It's okay, you're gonna fail some, some things. You're gonna not gonna have the best grade but you know, C is still passing, and that's fine. GPA is not a matter of your worth. You're gonna do okay, no matter what, you will be able to graduate soon. Just keep believing yourself. Yeah. My final question for you would be, um, looking at your four years of, uh, well, three years of health and then medical ethics, which area uh, do you think you learned the most? As far as, was that the diphtheria? You talked a little bit about influenza, carbohydrates. Which one do you think you are the best expert at of those different topics through those those years of health class? So I know uh, a lot about nutrition wise. I know um, like exactly the foods that are in most fruit and vegetables. Uh, even though complex carbohydrates are good for you, you can still, if you eat too much of an abundance, they will actually, you will gain more fat. And there's because I was on a diet for a long time. Um, and I would love to actually be in as a healthcare career in which I can help my patient, um, like their lifestyle wise, I feel like that dramatically has improved me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. This is just because I'm dumb. <laughs> no, no. What does it, an no. allied health specialist do? Allied health specialist. So it's a broad term for many things. It could be a physician, it could be the person who uh, takes your blood um, for like blood quests. You know those people. You never like them, they don't have the syringes. It could be uh, other people, such as take your temperature. Um, it can also be a nurse. Okay, so that there's like an actual bachelor's degree in that. Yes. Oh, huh. all right. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you.